Praise the Lord, saints, and welcome back to FFT, Food for Thought Ministries, where we move with purpose and our walk with Christ over here. My name is Rokisha Muhammad, and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, welcome, welcome, welcome. If you've been with me since day one, welcome back, family. This is our Thursday night Bible study, but you won't see this until Friday. We are working out of the book, The Purpose and Power of the Holy Spirit by Dr. Miles Monroe. If you do not have you a copy, go and grab you one. The link will be in the description box um, for Amazon purchase. It's running about 13 bucks. Um, and if you have Prime, you'll get it next day. Hallelujah. So without further ado, we're going to get started. I'm going to say a quick prayer. We're going to jump right into the question. So if you don't have the book, get the book. <laughs> okay, so let me... Um, um, start with prayer, and then we're going to jump right in. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to come before your people on today, Lord God. I ask that you purge us, Heavenly Father, of anything that is not like you out of our hearts, Lord God, so that we can receive this word on our hearts and write it on the tablets of our hearts, Lord God. I ask that you remove every um, thing that is not like us. I mean, not like you, Father God. Um, I ask that you create in us clean hearts, Heavenly Father, I'm asking, Lord God, for you to forgive us for all sin, known and unknown, Father God. We're asking for your divine wisdom, your divine spirit of knowledge, wisdom, understanding, clarity, and revelation on today. We receive it now, and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. We're asking also for our spiritual eyes to be open and for our spiritual ears to be open, Lord God. We thank you and receive it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, y'all, so let's get it. If you have the book, we are on page uh, chapter three, which is starting on page 43, right? But we're going straight to the questions, and our topic today is the Declaration of Independence. This chapter was fire, okay? I learned so much as I put in the email that it changed my perspective, because you know, well, at least I can't say you, I only can speak for myself. You know the story about Adam and Eve and the fall and all that good stuff. But when you have understanding, it's a totally difference from knowing and understanding, right? So in all you're getting, get an understanding. Hallelujah. So I have a lot of understanding behind a lot of this stuff, which, you, you know, you know it. But to understand it, I'm telling you, it just opened up my eyes in a whole nother way so for question number one which is our ref is a reflection question you just on your own there's nothing in the book you just go for what you know or how you feel the first two questions anytime it says reflection that's on you you reflecting right so for question number one i kept my short and sweet <clears throat> um and i had so many ones to pick from but i just chose this one anyway so it says have you ever believed a lie and then it says, that's the first question. And it says, what was it? The second, I mean, the third question was, what impact did it have on your life? So for mine, I put, um, yes, I have believed a lot. And it said, what was it? Mine was that my exes, boyfriends, lovers, what do you want to call them, claim to have loved me, right? You were looking for love in all the wrong places. And how did it impact my life? It allowed me to engage in fornication, giving myself up for a so-called love, if, if that makes sense. So for me, it was, you know, willingly as well, because, oh, they love me, so let me go ahead and do this. So I'm giving myself up, engaging in sin, fornication, believing a lie. So that was mine. And so I'm just going to leave that right there. I had a whole bunch of them, but that was one I just picked because I think everybody can kind of relate, at least if you was a lady. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> so um, I'm done. So let's see, what order are we going to go in? Anybody want to volunteer to go next? Or you want me to go next? Okay, come on, Beth. Mine, I actually put no. And the reason I put no is my inner intuition, intuition kicks in. And it has been doing that as far as I know my entire life as I worked at the bank. 
I never got a bad check because my intuition would pick, kick in and I wouldn't sign it because I had signed an authority with no limit. Mm -hmm. And I never had a bad check come back on me. And as far as family goes, my family goes, as far as work goes, all of that I always had a gut feeling. I could feel if somebody was lying. See, good discernment. Yeah, that's the spirit of discernment, discernment and man. working with the Holy Spirit, Beverly. See? Okay. Well, that's good because I've been, I didn't believe so many lies. <laughs> and, and, and on top of, you know, dealing with religion, dealing with men, uh, a whole bunch of stuff. <laughs> a whole bunch of stuff. I guess I just was gullible and naive. I don't know. But I have believed some lies. Okay. Who's going to be next? I can go. Go ahead, Haywood. Okay. Um, so I said yes. Um, I believed it. And I'm just going to use this as a sample. What it was was a friend of mine, she needed some money. And um, I loaned her the money. She told me she would pay me back. But as of this day, she haven't. But another thing about it, um, I volunteered to loan her the money because I knew she needed it, but she didn't pay me back. So what it made me do was lose trust in that person, you know, that told me that she would pay me back. So the next time she needed some money, and I know she needed it really bad, I had it, but I wouldn't loan it to her. Amen. Amen. Okay, Wanda Riri. <laughs> In Jesus' name, yes. Yes, I have. Um, yes, I have believed a lie in um, husbands that I've had in my past. And um, I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. And trusting in them and it sent me down the wrong road. And in the results of it, you know, as far as um, fast, quick money, must I say, you know, in the drug scene and the whole 10, you know, yeah, it was good at the time. And I was deceived and it had a real bad impact on me, not only me, but my whole family. From my kids to my siblings to my parents and to myself because in the end resorts I suffered from that with the fornication you know and I mean the whole 10 so yes but I just thank God right now today that he bought me out of it and God is a forgiving God and my family is too and um, I'm on the right track and I just praise God and and thank him for the experience that I did go through. Because, you know, like they say, when you go through stuff, find joy in it in the end. And I feel like this. I had to go through that. Even though I regret it and I, you know, I didn't like it and hurt a lot of people. And I did a lot of wrong. I did. I admit that. I know that. But in the end results of it all, it got me to where I am today. And I feel if I haven't experienced and went through it, glory be to God. I wouldn't be the person that I am today. Yeah. And I have a lot of testimonies to tell, but just right now is not the time. And I'm, I'm, I'm just grateful and I'm thankful to God. So yes, in the beginning, my life was a big lie. My whole life was a lie. It was, it was. But in Thank the you. end, I have joy and amen. And that's all I have to say. God is good. Amen. Oh, I didn't cry. Whew, thank you, Jesus. I'm getting better. Oh, Amen. Amen. Okay. This is Frankie. I said yes, and I guess it's kind of yes and no. I think, I, it, it, have you ever believed in a lie? Yes, but I think I just kind of settled for the lie. <laughs> I just generalize in mind because I said the, the way the world said we were to live here on earth. It's just one big lie. <laughs> Amen. So, I'm in agreement. Yes. That too. So, and yes, I man. said it, it impacted my life, I guess, in a sinful way because it, it I started to distrust a lot of people. I Amen. did I, I I just didn't trust people. I you know, 
I don't trust a lot of people the way I think I probably should, um, but I just don't. I always read something into it. So it, it just kind of, it just, just made me distrusting towards a lot of people. Amen. And I wouldn't look at it as so much distrusting. I would just say you just have a discerning spirit. You're yeah, to be, yeah. You're like, 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 like how Ann said, I could tell, I could kind of tell when people lie, but sometimes it, it it do do harm for me because of that. I'm always you you have you have less um, Good yeah. Back. Yeah, so less confident, less faith, less confident in that person. Yeah, yeah, and then I found, you know, until I started to read the Bible and understand it more, then I found out, you know, well, I didn't find out. It just taught me that the world, because of this this sinful way we live in this world, that they just change the laws to suit their needs, how they, you know, just to suit whatever it is that they're doing at that time. So. The, to me, the whole world is just a lie that we corrupt. Yeah, it's corrupt. It's yeah, corrupt. It is. That's why we are not supposed to be being lovers of it and seeking yeah, it. Yeah, because it's always something Heart. that they're trying to convince you that you need to do. What is that? In order to get this, you have to do this, and that's that's just a lie. <laughs> so amen. Yeah. And but like the example that we was talking about earlier, Frankie was like. They tell you that you need to go have a college degree. You need to have this. You need to have that. But God way of prospering. He said, meditate my exactly. word day and night, and then you will be prosperous and you will have good success. So according to the word of God, meditate his word. The world's way say, go to school, go to college, not knocking school and college. But I'm just saying, if you do it God's way, that that's how he said, he didn't say go to college, but yeah. you don't have no food either. Amen. Because, but the because. way for success and prosperity is meditating God's word day and night. So yeah. if you're looking for, you don't necessarily have to go to college. You do what the Bible said, do follow the protocol, and that's going to come by default. Amen. 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 Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Sister Taylor, you last but lovely. No, you still got to be as well. Me and Francis. Francis. Francis was first. Second. Yeah. Sister D, go ahead. I'm going to be last because we're going to go in the same order. Okay. Well, I would just like to make a comment first. Uh, it, you know, as to what Frankie was kind of saying, if you don't owe everybody, then you're nobody. In other words, uh, always uh, get this credit card, get that credit card. Yeah. So if I'm not in a whole lot of debt, then I'm nothing. But if I, if I, that's yeah. the world's thinking, you know. Okay. But yes, uh, I'll say yes. Um, I have believed a lot of lies myself. And um, I have some that are really painful that you know if i think about them at times it's kind of pa it's painful for me to to go back there and so uh but i have been in denial uh about the truth of those lies and i push it back so i have used money to you know how we go shopping and we see something and we're gonna pick up and we're gonna go on a joy ride and spend too much money and then so therefore you suffer the when mm -hmm. you get the bill in the mail. Mm -hmm. So then here you go trying to pay those bills. So uh, yeah, the, the, that's how the lie have affected me. I, I'm in denial of it um, to try to keep the pain from being so real to me. Uh, you know, I'll try to push it back on the back burner somewhere and forget about it and then go out and shop instead of facing it. So, but God is good and his mercy and do it forever. He has brought me through a lot of those lies in the past. Uh, and, and like uh, Wanda Reed said, it, it only helps you to be stronger when you know that Holy Spirit is helping you through. Uh, you have to go through in order to get through Amen. a lot of times in situations that we might have or we might face. So I just think, I'll say thanks be to God that I st I'm still in my right mind because I could not be in my right mind if it was not for him. And I'm thanking him for it. So, amen. 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 And I want to tell you, Sister Frankie, mm -hmm. the Lord say it's, it's a scripture. He didn't forget nothing. He's so awesome. Put your trust in no man. Mm -hmm. So don't feel like you have to because he tells you not to. Well, We're now not I supposed don't. to trust him. Yeah. 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 Now you write about it. You yeah, good. That's, that's why I said that. You was following scripture and didn't even know it. 
Amen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. After I, after I got in the Bible, I realized that the lie was a lie. <laughs> you know what I mean? And then I said, yes. And I said, the lie is, I thought I was happy living in the world. Realizing that it was a lie, when I gave my life to Christ, it impacted me in a magnificent way. Changed my way of thinking and living and started to live for God in his way. Because as we've all said and stated, besides um, Sister Bev and Sister Frankie, we didn't been through some stuff. And I know I have. I've been through a whole lot in my life. And it wasn't just lies that somebody else was telling me. It was probably lies that I was telling myself because I wanted to do what I wanted to do. But now I realize, like I said, living for Christ, it ain't me doing what I want to do. It's me doing what he wants me to do. I have to do it his way and not my way. Amen. Amen. Yes. That was awesome. Sure. Go ahead. I just wanted to say, um, it says that even though we're in the world, we're not a part of the world. And if we live our life, like we're not a part of this world and only in God's kingdom, then everything will be well. That's what we have to remember. Amen. Amen. So number two, we got to speed up. <laughs> number, number two, reflection. In what ways is independence a positive concept? And what ways might it be a negative one? So for my answer, again, this is your own free thought, right, reflection. And I said, um, the way that um, independence can be positive is if you are a parent and you raise a child and they can be out on their own, hallelujah, <laughs> that's a positive thing, okay? So for me, it is anyway, to know that you have raised them to be independent of you and they can sustain themselves on their own and not hurt or harm themselves, all right? So for me, I thought that was a positive concept. I don't know if I answered it right, but that's where I went with that one. And then the second part of that question, it says, how can it, how might it be a negative one? And I said, um, it is negative um, if we try to be independent from the one who created us, which is our Lord and Savior. So without him, we have no life source. Amen. Okay. Amen. Mine is, I looked up independence in the, in the uh, dictionary for definition of it, but I looked it up as far as connected with the Bible. And this is what I wrote. I wrote, the Bible definition of independence is freedom and free will and living in obedience to God's will and the freedom to make your own choices to speak, act, and pursue happiness without unnecessary external restrictions. And so the negative part of that is has to do, I think, with your more so with your choices. Because mm -hmm. you can make like Adam and Eve made the wrong choice and see where it got them. So I kind of connected it with Adam and Eve and so on. So you have free will and you can make your, God lets you make your own choices. So being independent of choices is making the right choice and not the wrong choice in his eyes. So that's what I wrote. <laughs> Amen, Beverly. Amen. That's good. Yeah. Okay. Um, hey, Wood. Well, this is what I said. I say it means that you can take care of yourself um, because we are not capable of living our lives without the Holy Spirit. We, and if we try, we really let Satan come in and lead us into darkness. So um, we need to be dependent on the Holy Spirit and God um, for our guidance and not just Try, trying to be independent on our own because that's what got us in trouble in the beginning with Adam and Eve. So that's basically what I said. Okay, wonderful. Well, there's so much that I could say. I'm just going to say that um, I'm glad that I'm 
independent on my own. That I, 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 I well, with the Lord, and I don't, not by myself, but with the Lord. <laughs> The Lord made it possible for me to be independent on my own. I can say now, I can take care of myself with the help and the grace of God. Amen. 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 And if Amen. they know, they know. And if they don't know, they, they don't know. <laughs> Amen. And I'm going to take part of Rakesha's um, answer, too, because I think I've raised her good and look at her. Bam. She's oh. Independent on her own. She ain't asking me for nothing. She handling it. Mm -hmm. I think she can give it back to mommy. Praise and bless her heart. Amen. 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 Okay, Sister Frankie. Okay, I said, um, in what ways is independence a positive concept? I said it could be positive when I use it against Satan. Not, not falling for, you know, just not falling for the rewritten laws that, <laughs> that they tell us we have to follow, you know. And then um, the negative way is when Satan try to get you to pull away from God and you know in your heart was right and you just... What you what you guys always saying? Stomping, stomp him on his head, stomp yeah. Satan, stomp his neck. So, so, so in in both ways, it's 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 against Satan for me. Mm -hmm. So it's positive when I don't allow him to come in, and it's negative. Well, it's not negative for me. I'm just gonna leave it at that because <laughs> that that just goes back to that distrust. I I, I just. I know it's something else out there. I know the truth. So, Amen. <laughs> so for me, I, I just know the truth, and that's what leads me. So, yeah. No, Amen, come on, Frankie. Amen. Come on. Just seek truth. Hallelujah. Okay, Mister D. Um, so it says, in uh, in what ways are you interpreting life solely through the physical senses? For the physical sense senses. Uh, if I was to interpret, it would be in negativity and I would be in bondage. And then uh, rather than by this nature of the spirit of the creator king. So in the nature and spirit of the creator king, that is a positive. Uh, and for me, it would be for, to have freedom in God. Amen. 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 Yeah. Okay. Write that down. Freedom and God. All right. She, she answering my questions in the back of the room. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Taylor, come on. I said positive because the independence of knowing who you are in God makes you walk, talk, think um, different from if someone or something has got a hold on you. And then I said negative. A negative can be if you think like the world. And get taken advantage of because of it. Not letting God rule and reign brings deception, which is negative. Amen. 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 So Amen. now we are into the questions. Hallelujah. Let's pray again. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> okay. In the name of Jesus, word my mouth. It says exploring principles and purposes. Number three. It says what happened to disrupt the heavenly kingdom plan of expanding its realm on earth, my Lord. And I just put that a rebellion started in the home country and it spread to the colony. Hallelujah. Amen. And I put the same thing. Okay. Hey, what? Well, I said, um, I kept it short. I said one word, Satan. He came in with his lies <laughs> and deceit. And he basically is um, it's what kept the heavenly kingdom from his family to the realms of earth. He, he came down here and just started a whole a whole big corruption. A new world. Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, Wanda Riri? I'm going to go. I have the same answer as you had. A rebellion that started in the home country spread it to the colony. Amen. 
on page 43. Yes. Frankie? I just said rebellion. Okay. D? When a rebellion that started in the country, and like Wanda Reby said, it spread to the colony. Amen. 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 Taylor? I said Satan happened. Rebellion. A breach took place. Mm -hmm. Amen. Come on. Amen. Amen. For real. Whew. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right now. Um, so let me just read this first paragraph just so everybody know where we got the question from so it can make sense because we just blah, blah, blah. So it says the territory of earth had been created and the colony established. The king's children were provided with a rich home and given authority to rule and prosper on earth on behalf of the king. However, something happened and disrupted the home country plan for expanding the realm of his heavenly kingdom on earth, a rebellion that started in the home country spread to the colony. Amen. And that was where we got, at least I got question three. So number four says, who um, instigated, instigated, instigated this disruption? Instigated. <laughs> instigated this disruption in the plan and what was his motivation for doing so. Oh. I said, so I've kind of put it in my own words, but it's still in the book. So I put um, Lucifer, okay? That's who it was. It said who uh -huh. it, um, instigated it, Lucifer. And I said, he thought that he could gain control over the king's own children. He, um, he could insult the king um, by preventing, I mean, he can, he wanted to basically insult the king by having his children turn on him. And then I said, um, he pervert, he wanted to prevent, what did I write? He, wait a minute, he wanted, okay. It says, and, and, pre, and prevent or thwart the purpose of the kingdom and take over illegally the colony, which is also known as the earth. So he Amen. do too much. Hallelujah. And mine, well, I got it out the book. It's Lucifer. And I put he was bent on revenge and still craved the power to rule a kingdom. And he wanted to sever the relationship between the king's children and their father. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. I would. Okay. And I said, um, it was Satan because he wanted to be ruler like the king, but he couldn't because he wasn't. The king created him. And he wanted to um, sever the relationship between the kids, I mean, the king's children from the king. He just wanted to mess us up, period, which he has been very successful uh, with um, a lot of people if they don't know the truth but it does say the truth so set you free amen yeah frankie um i said lucifer i said he wanted to gain control over the king's own children um insult the king and prevent the purpose of the heavenly kingdom so that he can seize power of the colony amen amen, amen. d uh, I said that um, it was one of the king's top generals, and his name was Lucifer. And his motivation was that he thought, he thought that he could gain control over the king's children and uh, insult the king, and then thwart the purposes of the heavenly kingdom and usurp the colony. That's what he thought he could do. But thanks be to God, he didn't do it. Amen. Amen. Uh -huh. um, Taylor. Again, Satan, to try and take over and be like God. Amen. 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 Um, so let's see. Taylor, can you read that second paragraph for us so that the subscribers could have a background? Amen. The rebellion had been instigated by one of the king's top generals named Lucifer. He had attempted a coup of the heavenly kingdom and been banished from the presence of the king along with his followers. Amen? Amen. 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 Yeah, keep going. Read it on out. No, because that's the next one. 
Oh, well, okay. You're right. That is number four. Amen. <laughs> this disgraced former aide was bent on revenge and still craved the power to rule a kingdom. He thought that if he could gain control over the king's own children, he okay. could insult the king, thwart the purposes of the of the heavenly kingdom, and upsert the colony. Amen. Y'all know he's a liar. Mm -hmm. Amen. Number five. It says, what was the nature of Lucifer's plan for disrupting the colony and what was his strategy for accomplishing it? My and Lord. I just said, to break the relationship with the king and his children, pervert the true government, in order to do this, he went out in disguise and used craftiness and deceit. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. I said... Um, to promote a spirit of rebellion and independence. And, uh, and uh, what is it? Oh, to disregard, to have the king's children disregard their authority, the father's authority over the colony and encourage them to act in, to encourage them in an act of insurrection. Amen. Amen. Sister Haywood. I said um, he was mad for one thing because God had kicked him out and he wanted to be ruler in heaven. Um, so his his plan was to corrupt the colony as much as he could and destroy it and destroy God's children. Amen. 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 Wanda Riri. I'm in agreement with that. Lucifer's plan was to serve the relationship between the king's children and their father and separate the citizenship of the colony for their true government. And then using, um, yeah, deceit and craftiness. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Okay. Um, Frankie. Amen. Because it's the same thing. Amen. 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 Mine is the same. He, you know, Lucifer's plan was that of detachment. I'll just put it that short. But I, I have the same thing yeah. written down as Amen. well. Amen. Amen. Okay, Taylor. Amen. Ditto. Okay. Because it was what you said and what Sister um, <clears throat> Sister Bev said. Because I put actually page forty three and forty four. Because I got it all highlighted up. Amen. Okay. So yeah. So Frankie, can you read that? Okay, on the last paragraph on 44 and then run over to the last first paragraph in 40. I mean, the last paragraph in 43 and then the first paragraph on 44. Amen. Yep. Okay, the plan detachment. Lucifer's plan was to sever the relationship between the king's children and their father and separate the citizens of the colony from their true government. So he went to the colony in disguise where the king's children had just begun to rule and infiltrated their government using craftiness and deceit. The strategy, an independent spirit. His strategy was to accomplish his broken relation. His strategy to accomplish this broken relationship was to promote a spirit of rebellion and independence. Subtly, subtly, sub, subtly. <laughs> questioning the integrity and goodwill of the king, he seduced the king's children to disregard their father's authority over the colony and encourage them in an act of insurre insurrection. Mm -hmm. The mm -hmm. following is an account of this incident from the first book of Moses. Amen. Yeah. It gives us a, um, the story of what happened at the fall, basically. It's telling that mm -hmm. story. Chapter 3. Just go read chapter 3, Genesis one, three. Amen. No, chapter three. Right? I don't think I'm right. Yeah. Amen. So where we at? Number six. six. Number six. Hallelujah. Number six says, in what two ways were the disbelief and rebellion of the king's child, I mean the king's children towards the king unnatural? So I don't know if I got this right or not. I just wrote what I wrote. So yeah, there was a lot of answers you could have come up for something specific, but I just picked this. Okay. <laughs> so I don't expect everybody answer to be the same. So I put um my first one, I said that um, um we they went against the king's instruction. And then the second part I put 
that he planted, he doubt was planted and distrust in their heart was also planted. And those were the two things that I put. Amen. Uh -huh. And Amen. that's what I put, doubt and distrust. Mm -hmm. Amen. Okay. Want to reread? Doubt and mistrust. I said the same thing. Amen. I'm sorry, Sister Hey, well, you were supposed to go after Ann. My bad. Oh. Hey, just one minute. Give me a second. I'm so sorry. Um, okay, go ahead, Frankie. You can go. Oh, doubt and distrust. That was mine, too. Oh, okay. doubt and distrust. Okay, what about you, D? Uh, I say that the children's response was that they were con contrary to the nature and the des and the desires of the king, and then um, it was that a it was a, a corruption of their own nature, which had been made in his likeness. Amen. 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 Already. Okay. Okay. Hey, I didn't put those answers. I just put. Um, they didn't want to be under the king's rule, and they disregarded his authority. Amen. And that's my answer. Okay, Sister Taylor. Thank you, Jesus, because we was all up in the same area. I put breach of faith and departure from the heart and the will of the king. Come on. Amen. Come on. Come on. Yeah. All right. Um, let me see. Number seven. It says, what did the children's rebellion ultimately amount to and why? Ah, my, my, my. I wrote a lot of stuff. <laughs> I wrote a lot of stuff on here, but yeah, it could have been summed up in one word, but I wrote a lot. So I wrote um, children turning their backs on the father, not wanting to be under his rule of government. Um, they wanted to be independent, which led to corruption due to the lack of trust that they have because of the doubt that Satan planted. And they, um, they violated and broke the contract um, that was given to us as human beings. Amen. That's what I wrote. Amen. Amen. I put um, some of what you said, Keisha, and I also put it represented a serious breach of faith and departure from the heart and will of the king. And I also put when that they rebelled, they ended up rebelling and declared independence from their father. Amen. And Amen. then I said something to totally different. I said it um, ultimately amounted to uh, death coming on them and that they had actually corrupted themselves by trusting in Satan lies. Amen. Wanda Riri. Uh, I put, um, well, they didn't want to be under the kingdom's jurisdiction anymore. And like with Adam and Eve, they rebelled and their independence. And um, well, let me see. Okay, when Adam and Eve rebelled and declared independence, they violated the legal contract of the government of the heavens had established with the human beings. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, That's my answer. Frankie. I said um, distrust in their hearts because they believed the lie that was placed before them. Um, then they turned their backs on, on God. And so Again, that's where that independence come in with that distrust because the independence was you didn't have the spirit of God in you no more. So mm -hmm. that's the way I was looking at that independence that's mm -hmm. coming through this book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, amen. Mm -hmm. Come on, D. Well, I kind of had the same thing. It's uh, they declared their independence. They violated the legal contract. And the result was that it amounted to treason on their part. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So they had to be banned. They had to get yeah. thrown out. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ooh, this was Amen. getting juicy. I was like, Ooh, this is getting good. <laughs> yes. When I first read it, I ain't going to lie to y'all. It hit my heart. 
I was crying because we wouldn't be in this if Adam and Eve wasn't doing what they're doing, eating on some fruits they were sold out to. Mm -hmm. So I, I, it did. It hit my heart. I was like, uh, I was almost crying. For real. Then I had to go back. Well, get it together, sister, because you're all right. You're living for the Lord now. But I did. It hit. <laughs> yes. And I actually went down a little bit more and said, by their rebellion, the children not only took something that wasn't theirs, but they also handed it over to someone who didn't deserve it and would never be qualified for it. Lucifer, the unfaithful formal general of heaven, would never have transformed this world into a heavenly kingdom. He would transform it into something completely opposite, a kingdom of darkness. Amen. 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 Okay. Um, oh, that was it. Okay. I'll wait for somebody else. So number eight, it says, according to the nature of the kingdom, what is the definition of sin? And I said, sin is rebellion against the essential nature and authority of the heavenly government. Amen. Amen. Everybody got that? In agreement. The person does. Say that again, Dad. It said, just above that, it said, many people think of sin as things a person does. And then it says what you had read. Yeah. Okay. I said something different. Okay, go ahead. What you say, Sister Hayward? I said, um, it's an immoral act considered to be a transgression against divine law in God's eyes. Mm -hmm. So we wasn't doing what God wanted us to do. Amen. And um, let me see here. And I got my answer from the paragraph saying the results trees in the last sentence. That's where I got my answer from. Yeah. Um, so Sister D, can you read that um, first paragraph on page 45? The first paragraph where it starts with the kings. Mm -hmm. The king's own children had declared, I don't want to be under the kingdom's jurisdiction anymore. I don't want to be under the king of kings. I don't want to be subjected to heaven's government. Yet the earth is heaven's property. When Adam and Eve rebelled and declared independence, they violated the legal contract the government of heaven had established with human beings. Many people think of sin as things a person does, yet it is both deeper and more pacific than that. Sin is rebellion against the essential nature and the authority of the heavenly government. Mm -hmm. Come on, somebody. Yeah. All right. So number nine, it says, what was the worst result of the children rejection of the king and his nature? I wrote some stuff, but at the, I ain't going to even read what I wrote. I'm just going to say death. Amen. <laughs> this is, Amen. I'm going to say death. What was the worst result is death. Amen. <laughs> Okay, go ahead, uh, Beverly. Okay, let's see. It was what was worse for them when they were living in the Garden of Eden. They had everything. Everything was free to them. They had the fruit, the food, everything. Everything was free. And when they rebelled, they had to do it on their own. It wasn't given freely. They had to toil and work and I mean things weren't going right for them nothing went right for them after that because they were on their own amen yeah. hey what that's number nine yes, ma'am uh, I said well the worst thing was they cut themselves out of a relationship with the king and with our relationship with him we don't have any hope Amen. Amen. Frankie? Um, kind of what you said, but I just wrote it out. I said they lost their essential source of life as human beings. They died spiritually, so death. <laughs> uh <-huh>. Amen. <laughs> Sister D? Uh, it was a breach of faith, and then it was departure from the will of the king. Amen. So that's death. Amen. amen. Uh -huh. Taylor? I just wrote death. That's why I said amen when you said it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, 
Beverly, can you read that first paragraph on page um, 46? It says the recall of the governor, just that first paragraph. That's where I got my answer. Oh, okay. It states, although they were removed from the magnificent garden, their former rule and their previous kingdom lifestyle, their rejection of the king and his nature led to something far worse. The king had previously alerted them. You are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. For when you eat of it, you will surely die. This was the only area on earth over which the king claimed jurisdiction. I know I'm saying it, but I'm saying it wrong. <laughs> and because he knew its misuse would lead to death. Amen. 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 That's where I got my answer from, so number nine. Amen. All right, so let's go to number 10. And it says, how did this loss affect the spirit, soul, and bodies of human beings? I said that they lost their life source, the king's spirit. They were disconnected from the spiritual realm. So their souls and physical bodies began to die slowly. Amen. Amen. And that's basically what I said in that the paragraph after number nine. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Hey, what? Um, I said, um, wait a minute, how do you do this? Okay, I said the Holy Spirit wouldn't be in them and um, the bodies would wear down and die and they lost their spiritual relationship. I said with God or the King. Yes, the king goddess. You done? Yes. Amen. Okay. Say, say amen so we know you finished. Okay. On the reread. They lost everything because they lost Jesus. They lost the Lord. So I'm in agreement with what you know. You have the answer down here in the book where it says they were still physical and alive for a time, but spiritually and solidly. They were dead to the king and his kingdom. Amen. 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 Um, D? I have the same answer, and uh, but I would just like to reiterate, it was a slow death. Yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, Taylor? Same thing. Amen. Ditto. Amen. So I'm just going to read this paragraph real quick. It says, the death of the king referred to us, I mean, the death of the king referred to was not an immediate um, bodily death. Adam and Eve did not physically die right away, but they lost their essential source of life as human beings. The king's spirit. Remember that the spirit of the king gave life to their spirit, souls, and bodies. When they rejected the king, they also rejected and lost his spirit. The governor alone was their dynamic connection between the seen and unseen realms. Therefore, their spirits and souls were cut off from the home country and their physical bodies began to die a slow death. They were still physically alive for a time, but spiritually and soulishly, they were dead to the king and his kingdom. My God. Amen. Okay, number 11. Is it number 11? Yeah. Yeah, number 11, it says, governors in the traditional human kingdom are forced out or called to withdraw if a colony becomes independent from the mother colony. I mean, from the mother country, my bad. Likewise, when humanity declares independent, the governor was blank to the heavenly kingdom. So we can say that in unison. One, two, three. Recall. 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 Amen. Recall, meaning run that back. Get up out of there. It's no longer your property. You ain't welcome. You got to get up out of there. Come on, Holy Spirit. Leave them now. They have rebuked. Yes. They have rejected. They have rebelled. They no longer want us there. So go ahead and let them um, die slow. <laughs> okay? Woo, Jesus. Yeah. 
Number 12, it says, how did the environment of earth change with the loss of the government? I said that it became hostile and unclean. My Lord. Yeah. Come on, Beverly. Yeah. I put, I'm trying to see what I put. <laughs> I put like on page 48. I put Earth's environment changed to the anti theses of the heavenly kingdom. But then I also put that um, everything changed. It was like the it, it became private. Pro, what is it? Poverty, genocide, mm -hmm. terrorism, political corruptedness, mm -hmm. drug addictions, mm -hmm. and, yeah. and every kind of evil that can be named. Man, Beth. Amen. And that was on page. Fifty-two. Okay. Say that again. Fifty-what? Two. Fifty-two. The last paragraph. But I put it. The first answer I put was, I guess, basically what the question asked. Oh, amen. Okay, Mister Hayward, what you got? Okay. Well, I said. Um, wait a minute. I said it was like everything changed. Because even just to work the, the, the ground and became hard and all kind of thistles and thorns grew that wasn't growing before because they were in a garden that was well kept. And I say then it became even more corrupt, meaning we became even more corrupt. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, Wanda Riri, you already went. You was ad living yes, on I went already. I'm in agreement with the world. Amen. Oh, Frankie. I, mean, <laughs> I said what Ann said, and uh, um, basically the environment changed in the exact opposite of God's heavenly kingdom. Amen. Okay, Lord. D, what you got? The same thing. And, and it, when it says the earth's environment, like Frankie was saying, changed to the antithesis. That means the opposite. Antithesis means the opposite. So yeah. what good could have been, what good is from the heaven's kingdom was totally flip side from the earth's environment. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Okay. Amen. Amen. And we all get the answers out the book. So yeah, amen. That, that was good. I yeah, but they was on I got my answer from 47. They on 52. So I don't know. I got mine on 48. 48 to the kingdom. Yeah. <laughs> my, <laughs> 48. <laughs> all right. Come on. That's all right. This is, this is like it was several places you could go yeah. to get some yeah. of I was gonna say, I'll tell you what this lesson did. It did have you jump around and be able to grab mm -hmm. your answers from yeah. different places. Right. But it's awesome to know that. In this lesson in itself, like you said, Sister Rokisha, it brings out things that you was, okay, oh, I knew that, mm -hmm. I heard that, but I now I understand that. Like you said, yeah. Right. Uh, Adam and Eve, yeah, thank you, Lord. Um, yeah, that we wouldn't even be in this position, period. There would be no sin. Uh -huh. Right. Mm -hmm. God didn't I mean, create this earth to have sin. Right. So, right. right. I mean, the, the thinking, the process and the part, you you always be like, oh, Adam and Eve, they got deceived. But then, no, it was a real rebellion. It yeah. was like, I want to be God. I don't need you. You know what I'm saying? So that was the perspective that I got woken up. You know, And I it's because they them. didn't, yeah, right. they didn't even know. Before, like, oh, the devil came and deceived them. But no, it was a real injection. You know, it was like, no, they basically failed with the angels. When they got struck down, God was like, okay, y'all go too. So it wasn't even like no feel bad for them. It's like they didn't want them. And it goes back to just letting us they know how them. good. Look at it like that. I was just like, oh, poor Adam and Eve. But that <laughs> no. came to my mind. No. It was like deuces. We want to do this on our own. And he was yeah. out there and sweat your brow. Adam and Eve gave us that independence, which was the sin we living in now. So Right, which is a mm -hmm. slow death. And that's what everybody okay. is searching for. But that's getting ahead of things. So let's, go, let's keep moving because we got... And it also just lets us know how good of a God that we have. He oh, already wow. knew. That's why he told them, don't eat from that tree. He knew what was going to happen. 
Right. Right. Because they didn't even know no evil. So yeah, because you gonna now you gonna have knowledge. You gonna you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like Sister uh, Bev said, she made a really good point when she said they was living good. They didn't have to worry about nothing. Now it's toil and everything else going on because God, he just so awesome because he knew. He right. now warned y'all, just like he warned everybody else. Repent. The right. kingdom of God is at hand. For real. <laughs> For real. For real. It's Ooh, Jesus. Okay. So let's go to 13. It says, yeah. it says, what did human beings become? I mean, yeah. What did human beings become dependent on after they lost, they lost, they lost the spirit, which was the spirit of God. Once they said they didn't want them no more, what did, what did they start having to depend on? I said they had to depend on their five physical senses, which mm -hmm. limited their perspective on life reality. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I basically said the same thing from where the spirit was inside them and came out. Now they had to live on what was outside that went in. And basically what you said, Keisha, because in that next sentence, it says what you said. Okay. So everybody agreeing to that? Amen. Amen. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, Sister Haywood, can you read um, on page 48? the cutoff from the true, true life. Just that paragraph. Wait a minute, 48? Mm -hmm. Okay. Although human beings were designed to live from the inside out, this situation was now reversed because they had lost the Holy Spirit who had been their connection with the Father. They now had to live from the outside in they became totally dependent on their five physical senses, the physical world, which could give them only a limited perspective on life's relativities. Reality. Oh, I'm sorry, realities. Imposed itself on their inner world. I believe this is why one of the first words we read about Adam and Eve after their rebellion is the word realized or new. Suddenly they realized they were naked. Uh -huh. Does this uh, implies they didn't know this before? I don't think so. I believe it was, it implies this nakedness is an external consciousness rather than something that is spiritual discern. The body and the sense, senses rather than the spirit took over humanity force of life, force, focus in life. Mm -hmm. Human beings no longer have a spiritual uh, perceptive as their essentials, but a sensual one. Amen. 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 Come on. Number 14. It says, why is it dangerous to interpret the physical world only from the physical world itself? And I said, because we were never intended to interpret the physical world for, from itself, but from the spiritual reality from the kingdom. Amen. 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 That's what I said, too. All right. Beverly, what you got? I basically said that it was, I went from the next paragraph from the one uh, Sister Haywood just read. And it was a perspective based only on the senses, which leads to confusion. And uh, the and uh, what is that? And they begin to depend on the soul, the mind, will, and emotions informed by the senses. And they had to interpret life by their senses. Yeah. So just keep reading that on out, and all the way to the end, to the okay. paragraph. Let's see, a perspective based only on the senses inevitably led to confusion. Humanity began to depend on the soul, the mind, will, and emotions informed by the senses to interpret life. From then on, what we say, what we saw, heard, touched, sensed, and smelled became the dominant components in our in our human experience. Consequently, we begin to interpret our 
creation, our create, our creator, king, mainly from our physical senses as well. For example, the field of science attempts to understand the unseen world only from the seen world. This approach is dangerous because human beings were never intended to interpret the physical world from itself, but from the spiritual reality of the kingdom. Amen. Amen. So Amen. Yeah. The Did part about them knowing that they was um, naked, that was the knowledge. You know yeah. what I mean? That's why he said, don't eat of that tree of knowledge of good and evil. They would, they, di they didn't know, but they did know. You know what I'm saying? But once they got that knowledge, oh, all this is showing. So now your mind, you know what I'm saying? It just, it went a whole different direction. That's just, that's awesome to me because yeah. they were in the spirit where they didn't even think about that. You understand what I'm right, saying? Right, then right. as soon as they got that knowledge that they wasn't supposed to get, my Lord and my God, huh? it messed right. them up. Right. Messed so, us up. Just like you said, Taylor, when I read that, I was it just it was a wow moment to me too, because it was like you we were so, I mean not we, but they were so in the spiritual realm that they didn't even think about being naked because that that was a, that was a sin conscious. They didn't have sin. Yes. They have never sinned. Yes. So once they sinned, then that sin conscious came on them, and that was also a state of perversion because now your folk, you came out of the spirit, and went straight into the flesh, and now you're thinking about private parts, sexual things. Yeah. You mind what that was right. never learned before. Yeah. It, but when your mind got perverted, now you're yeah. looking at. I was about to say the T word. Y'all know what was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? So you look at <laughs> you that look was at, the whole um that was the whole light bulb for them. Yeah. Like that's that sin, that guilt, that shame came on them immediately. The sex was actually part. the knowledge. The because sexual, they didn't know. Yeah, the, that's why that tree said the knowledge of good and evil. So what happened was now they had knowledge to understand what's going on with these senses. Right. That's why right. God he knew. But, but another thing, as soon as they did that, they were cut off from God immediately. Yes, so they, so yes, you lost God. out. They senses came into play, so they lost the spiritual sight because yes. God can't handle the sin, the disobedience, so they were immediately cut off, and that's when they had to drop, you know, the fall. It's because, their, yeah, now you know. That's so why you got kicked like, out like Satan. Yeah, you got, you got, you you got shut down. You got disconnected. Boom, power down. You know what I'm saying? So now your other stuff right. had to kick in. Oh, 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 oh. Right? So ooh, that was powerful. Yeah, the, the sexual part was the sin itself. Yes. That was the mm -hmm. whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What was you gonna say, D? Oh no, I wasn't gonna I wasn't gonna say anything, but oh. I was just in agreement to everything that you all were saying. Oh. Yeah, that was good. That was like yes. Ooh, ooh come on. So now where we at on number 15. 15. It says this several, I mean, list several reasons why the governor is the key to our family. I mean, number 15, list several reasons why the governor is the key to our being fully human. And I wrote a lot of stuff, but let me just see if I can make it out. It says he is only, he is the only avenue we have to understanding ourselves um, in the physical world since he created and manufactured it, we need to, um, we need, uh, we need him to bridge our relationship with the king in the, in the spiritual realm. <laughs> oh, God gave me my writing. He is what makes us fully human. We can function as he has designed if we, we cannot function if, as he has designed if we are not in relationship with him. Amen. That's what I wrote. Oof. Come on, Bev. I put, let's see, I didn't write it. I just kind of went through the paragraph. And I don't know if this is the right paragraph, wrong paragraph or what. But I put that um, the governor is the key to our being fully human. Mm -hmm. And he had that. And he was, the governor provided the relationship, like you said, between mm -hmm. him and the king. Mm -hmm. And I also put that uh, he had the authority and the power over us. Amen. And, uh, and he was the key to our self-understanding. 
Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I could go on and on and on and on. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you don't have to. Sister Tay, I mean, Sister Francis. Okay, I just put, um, well, he lives in us and directs us to the truth. Uh, God's will is his will. So he helped us to let God's will be our will. Amen. Wanda Riri. Okay, I'm going to put to be true and completely human beings, we must somehow become reconnected to the re in dwelling by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Come on, Frankie. I said um, the governor knows the several reasons why being fully human. I said because the governor knows the mind of the king. He knows the mind of God. He can't, and we can't be what we were born to be as humans unless we have a vital connection to his original intent, which is God. And it says he is our, God, I can't even reference to ourselves. He is the king. He is the key to our self-understanding. And he is our only I'm sorry, I can't read my writing, y'all. He is our only reference to the king. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Come on, D. Uh, well, I kind of said some of the same things uh, through the governor. Can we know why we are really here? Uh, the governor is the key to our being fully human. Uh, we can't express ourselves unless we have, or unless we are in relationship with him. Amen. And then the key to our, our self-understanding is through him. Uh, and to be through, true and complete human beings is because of him. And then we can reconnect uh, with him. So Amen. he does a lot for us and even more. Amen. Amen. Come on, Taylor. And can I just read that whole thing, Keish? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> We must grasp the deep significance of this truth. Having the spirit of the king is essential, not only for our relationship with the invisible king, but also for understanding our own humanity. Only through the governor can we know why we are really here and how to interpret the world in which we live. In other words, how to truly see our environment. The governor is the key to our, full, to our being fully human. We can't express the king's nature unless... We are in a relationship with him, and the governor provides that relationship. Only the governor knows the mind of the king. We cannot be what we were born to be as human beings unless we have a vital connection to our original intent. The governor is our reference to ourselves. He is the key to our self-understanding. To be true and complete human beings, we must somehow become reconnected and re-indwelled by the Holy Spirit. Amen. Come on, somebody. So, Amen. so in other words, he is our all in all, and without him, we are nothing. nothing. Amen. That's right. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Period point blank poo. Okay. So how dare That's you right. Lord, for waking me up? How dare you? How dare you? Him? How dare you? How Not dare thank him for breathing new breath into you. How dare you? Yeah, I'm with you, you, sis. You. How, how dare you? you? How dare you, my lord? I, I feel yeah, you disrespected my father now. Yeah, right, so yeah, I'm right. a little tea. I'm a little tea. Man, because he didn't have to wake you up while you over here not thanking him. Come on, my lord. Does don't play with him. Oh lord, this is just giving me more reverence. You understand me? <laughs> okay. Right, right. Ooh. To love on him more and more. Mm -hmm. Number seventeen. Is that what we had? Six, sixteen. Okay, sixteen. It says for humanity. What were the harsh realities of self-government? I said, working for everything instead of having everything work for you. Woo! Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, amen. I'll take that. <laughs> <laughs> I put that they had to survive by their own wits and they had to pay their own way mm -hmm. and they were left to fend for themselves and to function using, using only their senses. Amen. Amen. And, and I put, they just messed up, period. Okay, <laughs> Sister Haywood, go ahead. I put a whole lot of failures was the reality for us, because we did a whole lot of failing, failing them. 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And we still can't get right. Jesus. <laughs> we trying now. Come on, Frankie. I put the same thing Ann had, um, and I did include they because I wasn't including myself in that no more. So, <laughs> hey, <she's messed> up. <laughs> Amen. Come on, D. What you got? Dee? I have uh, humanity are the intro. Well, for humanity, it was the introduction of fear, and then to have a, um, a survival mindset. And then also it was inevitability, in, in, inevitable uh, to death. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on, Taylor. Amen. I'm just going to say ditto because guess what? As we keep going through this, y'all can already see where it's leading to. Amen. 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 Woo. Bless him. 17. That was good. Woo. 17 says, describe the culture human beings created as a substitute for the culture of heaven. This is what you went from paradise, and now this is what you went to when you want to be independent. This is what you get. You get culture of murder. You get the culture of incest, the culture of adultery, the culture of abuse, the culture of domestic violence, the culture of devastation, the culture of chaos, and the culture of death. Mm Mm-hmm. (laughs) <laughs> and I basically said the same thing and it was a kingdom and culture of darkness mm-hmm. come, on. <laughs> come on and I said it was a culture of darkness and death that's what we put ourselves <laughs> in Ooh, come on um, Frankie I oh, said no, oh, oh. Who is it? I'm in agreement with Sister Rikisha, Sister Hayward, Sister D, Sister Frankie, Sister Ann, Sister <laughs> <laughs> all, all of it. <laughs> I kind of said what you said, Keisha, culture of darkness, adultery, incest, murder, inhuman abuse. All of it. And the dark culture destroys, it said the dark culture destroys the young and the old, the strong and the weak. Mm-hmm. Um, Experience and it said crime upon crime, the brothers, mm-hmm. the brothers, and right. and AKA the Israelites, the black community, and the children of Judah. First shall be last, and the last shall be first. Amen. Come on, somebody. My <laughs> Lord. Right. And, and to sum it up, excuse me, to sum it up, I put down every sin there is to be had. Amen. Amen. We're doing it every day. Amen. Okay, Sister D, what you got? And you- then it's, and I got all of that, and then and the whole realm of human existence experiences that. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. Amen. <laughs> yes, what you got, Taylor? I know you got the same thing. Actually, you know what? I just literally wrote darkness because that's everything that that said. That's what it sums up to. But right. that's the world. We are yeah. in this world, but we are not of this world. So because of everything that was going on, everything that happened, our spiritual eyes are open. Thank you, Jesus, our spiritual eyes are open. But when you're still in the world, straight darkness. Everything that, that, that y'all said, that's exactly what it is. Right. Amen. Yes. Whew. Okay. Oh, let me just read this paragraph real quick. Mm-hmm. It says, we must, we must ask ourselves, how well are we doing? He ain't doing good. It says, become darkness, corrupt. Okay, one of the first things that took place after each loss of governor was that a man was murdered by his uh, by his older brother. What a way to start a new culture. Instead of the kingdom of heaven defining and transforming earth, a kingdom and culture of darkness came upon it and began to spread. Adultery, incest, abuse, and domestic violence are all parts of this culture of darkness. It destroys young and old, strong and weak. We are still experiencing crime upon crime, brothers killing brothers. Whoever the governor of the king does not rule, you will find murder in other instances of man's man's inhumanity to man. The abuse and destruction afflicts families, communities, businesses, and governments. The whole realm of the human race is jacks. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Say something else, but <laughs> <laughs> channel. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. Amen. It says, and number 18 says, immediately following humanity's rebellion and the loss of the governor, the king chose one. I mean, the king choose the king, and it's telling us to choose one. There's A, B, C, and D. A okay. says, believe humanity was not worth saving. B says, total humanity to figure out its own problems. C says, said Lucifer and humanity deserves one another. And D says, promise the return of the governor and Earth's restoration. And the answer is D. D. Amen. Amen. D. The promise. Wait, Sister Rokisha, before you finish, I was hoping that you would finish reading while this happened. Oh, yeah. It's like all this transpired because human beings listened to the treacherous lies of a rebellious former aide to our king father who wanted to upsert the colony for himself. Jesus of Nazareth describes Lucifer as the father of lies and a murderer. He also said the thief comes only to steal, kill, and destroy. Come on, come on. Jesus. So we already know it's all about what Satan started with that lie to, to, to Eve. Okay? Right. Lies. All lies. Come on. Mm. Oh, Amen. Come on. Okay. Mm, mm, mm. I, well, I just wanted to keep on reading. <laughs> <laughs> Number 19. Yeah, that whole page. Yeah, yeah that whole page. Yeah. That whole page is good. Maybe we need to just finish that on out, Taylor. Just go ahead and finish that out because we need they need to hear this. When this disgraced former general took authority over the territory of Earth, the natural result was devastation and death. His intent as a legal governor on Earth was not to bring freedom. It was to steal people's lives so he can ultimately destroy them. He is a foreign ruler who has taken over the colony of Earth and desires to destroy the original culture of inhabitants. He rules over a destructive kingdom of darkness in which human beings have become either his willing or unwilling accomplices. Mm. Who? What mm. have we done to this planet? Jesus. From mm. time to time, humanity's rejection of the king and the loss of the governor, human beings have been attempting to dominate the king's colony without the mind or the heart of the king. Trying mm. to run the planet without the king's nature has led to a breakdown in humanity authority and power to address vital issues. It is the source of the world's poverty, genocide, terrorism, political corruption, drug addiction, broken homes, and every kind of evil that can be named. We have created a state of rebellion and confusion. This world is a, ooh, a disaster without the governor. Disaster. Oh, Y'all hear that? Y'all know who the governor is, right? Oh, you too? The Holy Spirit. Spirit. We need him. Jesus. Amen. And that's why people yes. say, well, where is God? He been in it. You just got to turn from your wicked way so we can take more territory. He waiting on. on you. He gave the power and authority to you, but you got to receive it so that he can bring his power down here so we can take this territory. Come on. Put on your yes. coat, put on your armor, and suit up. It's Come on, because we are in a war. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I'm sorry. I've been getting fired up. No, it's <laughs> real. Because it's, it's real, we yeah. Because we ain't doing our part. We ain't doing our part, and that's why stuff is, that's why Satan is gaining territory, because we ain't on post. We sitting here watching Netflix and chilling. Man, stop it. Mm. Get in your face in the book, not, and not Facebook, but this book. This book <laughs> is where your face needs to be. Come on. Man. I'm sorry. This my so babies is getting shot up in the schools because of those wicked-minded people. We need to pray them demons out of them folks' head. Amen. Come on. We need to get be on our job. We got to be about our father's yeah. business. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. This Amen. ain't a game. You, see. you might want to ignore it. It's not it. a game. In it. Why do you right. your face? You can call it conspiracy theory. You can call it whatever you want to say. It's Bible. It's written. It has been written. And it's just playing right. out in front of our face. If you're paying attention and reading this word, you will see it. Ask the Lord to open your spiritual eyes so that you can see. It's not a game. This is real. This real. is real. Oh it's realer real. than mm. these five cities that we trying to operate in, <laughs> which is yeah. deceiving us all day long because they say we working from the inside out instead of in outside in. Come on, because we yeah. wouldn't even knew, my Lord. None of this would even yeah. be going on. We wouldn't have no sin. Mm -hmm. But now that we do, we got to get on our job and be about our father's business, win some souls so that we could take over this this world because we have the authority. Amen. Yes. Thank Amen. you, Jesus. Control. Yeah. They have. 
Woo, bless him. Come on now. See how the spirit just comes in. Bless Ooh, him. Yeah. Yes. Oh, thank, you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank Hallelujah. Lord. Thank Praise you. the Lord. Hallelujah. Can I say something? Yes, go it's ahead. It's so sad that so many people don't even know about this. There you yeah. go. It is. That's you know, the that's our that's part. That's our job. Yeah. That's our job. That's, that's our true. job. That's our job. And it's sad because these are these is our cousins, these is our brothers, these is our sisters, our real blood family that's out here lost, don't want to hear it, rejecting God. So you don't think it's break, just breaking God's heart. It's breaking my heart too because I know so many people that don't want to hear it. That's rejecting. So all we could do is match. Speaking this again because they're blind and they don't want to see. All kind right. of sexual perversion. You don't want to tell them they offended. They feel it's hurt. You tell them you can't do this. You can't do that. They don't want to hear it. But is it worth your damnation? Is it worth going to hell for all eternity? I'm just saying, people ain't thinking about the life after you ain't promised tomorrow. You no. may not have a chance to get it right. Brother, sister, Andrea, Jamon, I'm talking to y'all. Because you're out here believing these lies. My kids. Yeah. Game. I'm you're out here believing these lies. We're telling y'all right now. Just get on this 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 here lesson right here. Listen to this <laughs> here lesson because the Holy Spirit is talking tonight. Glory yes, to God. Yes, he Amen. Is. Amen. Jesus, Hallelujah. I'm yeah, it does. It hurts. And yeah, that's that's I'm why. Yeah. Out here, y'all better, man. This man, this is serious. It's right in our face. It's right in our face. Hallelujah. Mm. Janelle, Janae, Ashley, uh, Rihanna, Rasan. I'm, I'm yeah. calling my family. I'm Don, Daniel, Nicole, Netta, Cookie. Come on. Yeah. yeah get on it. Get on it. Yeah. I already called y'all saved, so y'all gonna be saved, but I'm just I'm just saying. Get and that's on. all we got to do is continue to do what you're doing, Keish. Be that light, have that holy boldness, and not be afraid to speak about God. I'm Period. Not, I'm, not. I'm calling Period. You. That's what we do. God love us. This is our assignment. Yeah. This this wasn't led by this. This wasn't no coincidence. This wasn't no coincidence. Amen. I'm just following the leader, him, the Holy Spirit, my Lord. Okay. One well, will on. plant one with water and God will get an increase. That's all we got to keep doing, planting and watering. And that's what we're doing weekly on this channel. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Come Amen. On. Amen. Number 19. What is the bottom line in every Ooh. preacher's, I mean preachers, so we preaching today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what is the bottom line in every person's search for power and meaning in life? It says they are seeking the return of the governor, which is the Holy Spirit. Here we just told you what the bottom yeah. line is when you was calling out everything you said. We mm -hmm. straight up told you right there. The bottom line is not realize it. God is waiting on y'all. He waiting with mm -hmm. open mm -hmm. arms. Mm -hmm. He loves us. He wished that none would perish. He is not mad at you. Never. He loves you. Yes. You, just gotta, you just gotta know him so you can Girl, understand the love and have this kind of stuff lessons broken yeah. down so you gain understanding. Yeah. I'm telling you. To know is one thing, but to understand Man. is a whole nother thing. I'm telling because you. Because you, your spiritual eyes are opening. You can see everything that he said in his word is happening right now. Yes. They say yes. His word is true. Uh -huh. His word is true. Mm. My Lord, Jesus. Mm. So I guess we agree on that, but we already <laughs> agree. <laughs> Number 20. It says, what was the king's plan to restore the governor to earth? And I said, to send an offspring to be born in the colony who would restore the kingdom influence to the colony crushed the head of darkness, which is the spirit, I mean, the dark darkness, and um, give take back the authority and power, which we got now, y'all. We got yeah, it. It's been stolen and restore it back. Now, go ahead, Beverly, what you got? Basically, mm -hmm. what you have and what, and basically, is his return. Glory be yeah. to yeah. God. Amen. Amen. I just, I just said Jesus. <laughs> yeah, <now. laughs> That's right, Frankie. Come on, hey, what, what you got? I said Jesus Christ. Oh, He's my Lord and my Savior. Mm -hmm. oh, yes. What you want? Want to reread? Yeah. Yeah. Amen, Jesus. That's my <laughs> Yeah. Okay. <laughs> An offspring, a capital O, offspring, but via Jesus Christ. 
Amen. 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 Yeah. Jesus. The return of the king's Jesus. spirit. Amen. Bring his Come spirit on. back here. Get Satan's Amen. spirit up out of here. Get out. You right. are beneath our feet. We already stomping on your head, but we just need to gain more territory like he. We got to get the labor. The, 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 the harvest is right, but the laborers are few. But that's all right, because guess what? We got laborers all over this world. They ain't just here in California. It ain't just in Texas. It ain't just in Vegas. It ain't just in Stockton. It's in Chicago. It's in, it's everywhere. So guess what? We gain in territory. Right, oh, yeah, because right. guess what? All he we win. win. We all, he need win. Is a all he need is a remnant. All he need is a remnant. Ooh, just, thank right. you, Jesus. That's going to be for real. All he needs is a food that's really going to soldier up. He just and, and look, you Woo! got it for the last few years, soldier it up. He only had 300 and they, and they took over. He only had 300 soldiers, right? And they took over. Uh -huh. He don't need a remnant of us. We can do it. We just got to be in unity and on the same page. My God. That's right. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory be to God. Okay. Whew. Jesus. Okay, that was the end of the questions, y'all. We getting fired up over here. Uh, now we got, this is the end y'all I know this is long I know people in different states and, and um, <laughs> gotta get off because we got work in the morning so let's sum this up real quick if those who want to answer you can if not then you can pass um, think it over it says have you ever had a sense have you had a sense something is missing in your life though you haven't known what it is what have you used to try to fill the emptiness for example money relationship work parties sports how would this presence of the governor in your life remove the emptiness you have experienced? Um, anybody want to go? I say yes. Um, I, I, I did have a sense of something missing in my life a while back. And what I used to try to fill it, um, like Sister D said, I used to shop a lot. I mm. still shop, but I used to shop. I used to shop and shop and buy stuff that I didn't even want. <laughs> so I'd get home and, and 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 just why did I buy that? I didn't even want it, you know. But that was I thought it was filling a void in my life, but it wasn't. And so now um, it said, "How would the presence of the governor in your life? Well, presence of God in my life now has given me a sense of freedom, um, mm. knowing that I can." that just knowing that that I'm I'm good not having to be under the thumb of, of Satan you know and 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 being able to say I don't care do what you do what you got to do because <laughs> I'm gonna do what I need to do <laughs> so come on, come on. <laughs> and that's and that's keep on believing in God and Jesus Christ amen amen, amen. anybody else want to share I'll say, uh, yeah, I was a shopaholic too. Boy, I ain't shopped in so long now. It's really ridiculous, but I don't care. But well, I, what I'm going to say is that learning God's words has really changed my life. That's the most impressive change in my life because it just changed everything about me. You know, how I think, how I act, how I respond to people. I mean, that's that's the best thing of all, knowing God's word. Leave it at that. Amen. 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 Anybody else? Sister D? I'll say um, being that sh shopping spree shopaholic <laughs> in the past, I would have uh, have empty load of feelings, uh, feeling down. But now have it, the presence of the governor removes all doubt, oppression. He helps me to get up and move around, mm -hmm. to get going, to grab my Bible, a devotional, to sit quietly like Mar Mary did at the feet of Jesus and not be a busy Martha. And then uh, to be uh, prayerful, in a prayerful mode. And to then to write out some prayers as well. And so to where the emptiness, I with the, you know, with that emptiness right now, I could just steamroll the devil in Jesus' name. Amen. He got to go. Man. He got to go. He's got to go. He got All to. Right. I love he it. Steamrolling. That's, That's it. right. Steamrolling him. He got to calm down. <laughs> now. That's right. Under my feet. Yes. <laughs> Amen. Amen. 
Amen. And then I just said relationships. I was in relationship, jumping from relationship to relationship. That was how I was feeling my emptiness. And now, because of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, I have a restored life source, which is my Lord in Jesus Christ. So now I can truly live. Amen. Yeah. Man. And I need to say, I don't know how to explain this with me, but be, I guess that emptiness feeling or whatever is my illness that I have. But then it's like, like what Frankie said with the shopping and all that. It's like I'm going on with my life. Like it's, not, you know, like, okay, I have this, but it's not going to stop me from doing what I've always done. Amen. So right. in my mind, it's like, okay, if I can shop and wait for this to come and wear it and all that, yeah, I got a long ways to go. So this illness is not going to stop me from doing what I want to do. Yes, and that's the mindset that you should have in because yeah, it is. it's called you want to live because when you start meditating on the illness, you're coming into agreement with it, which is going to speed things up or activate things back into plan. But if you plan on living, then live and that's it. Yeah. Even now, think. I still have to acknowledge that I am ill, but that doesn't stop me from doing what I do. It gives me hope. Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Anybody else? Nope. Okay. Let's move on to the next one. It says, um, in what ways are you interpreting life solely through your physical senses rather than by the nature and spirit of the creator king? And I'll go if nobody want to go. I just said for mine, I said, um, when I'm walking in the flesh, I'm interpreting life through my physical senses, my mind, you know, my looking through my eyes, hands, touch, taste when I'm in the flesh. That's when I'm doing that. And then it says, um, what is my natural, my nature when I'm walking in the spirit? It says when, when I'm walking by sight, I mean, uh -uh. walking by sight, I mean, <laughs> y'all know what I'm going to say, not walking by sight, but walking walk by, by faith. faith. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. what I meant to say. Because when you walk in this, by faith, you ain't tripping on what's happening, what's going on, you just trust in God. And that's mm -hmm. you trust in the leading of the Holy Spirit. Amen. So that's what I said for my Amen. answer. Amen. I want to say I have to walk by faith every day. Thank God that I have enough faith to walk by it and not by sight. The sight ain't worth nothing these days. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Anybody else? I'm just going to say I'm just grateful. <laughs> Amen. Number three, it says only number three, but bullet bullet three? Wait a minute. Yeah, bullet three. It says in what ways are you oh, are, there any areas? are there any areas? Okay, bullet four. Are there any areas in your life where you have believed the lie from Lucifer that being independent from the king creator I mean, the creator king is a good thing. How would a full reconnection with the creator king change your life for the better? And I said, no. I said, no. Yeah, I said, living out my kingdom assignment, ordained by God, walking in his perfect will and plan for my life. Amen. Amen. Yeah, I said I, I said no too. Uh, um, now that I know, mm -mm. now we're going down. I said, "Oh no, certainly not. I <laughs> cannot do life without the Creator King. He is the reason why I live. For in Him I live, move, and have my very being." Come on, That's Amen. Yeah, bars. Okay, <laughs> That's the right there. Amen. Anybody else? I say no, because I know that whenever I check out of here and I meet up with Jesus, I want him to say, well done, my faithful servant. That's what I'm constantly working on, daily. Amen. <laughs> okay, so the next one says, acting on it. It says, Dr. Monroe wrote that sin is rebellion against the essential nature and authority of the heavenly government. Think about a sin you are currently struggling with and describe how it is in opposition 
to the nature and authority of the king. Did I write something? Oh, yeah, I did. I wrote, the sin that I'm dealing with right now is slothfulness and discipline. And the way that is holding me up in opposition to what God wants me to do, because I should have had five books written already that he already placed in my heart. I haven't started them yet. I mean, I started them, but I ain't completed them due to slothfulness, laziness, and undisciplined. So that's holding up my people because the books are to help others understand God's plan for their life. But how I'm going to do that if I ain't even obeying it for my life, right? So that is a demon that I am fighting right now slothfulness because i should already had three books out so for me that's the sin i'm dealing with slothfulness gluttony and discipline hallelujah amen those are demons i'm dealing with i should say i'm fighting i know everybody got some but those is mine okay i got um one i mean i just recently really started to try to break some of these curses and get some of these evil spirits out of people, you know, because it's apparently, and they showing, <clears throat> I can see them. It's hard for me to see my own, but I, I be trying to break them off people and me too. And also praying that um, they go ahead and accept this word of God because so many people are just like not even hearing and I want them to hear and I don't want to force myself on them to hear but you know I, I have to pray that at some point they hear you know because I'm I'm 70 I'm also I'll be 71 this year so Amen. I feel blessed that God has kept me around this long you know that I could get this <laughs> imagine five years ago or 10 years ago if I'd have died, I'd, I'd have been burning in hell too. I don't intend to burn in hell. I, I begin to, I I'm only want to stay faithful to God for it. That's it. And that's, that's what I want everybody to do. I really do Amen. with my heart. Amen. Anybody else? I'm guilty of sins that I would care not to discuss. But yes, yeah, some things that I'm, I'm still a work in progress. But I think think I'm progressing a whole lot better than I was um, two weeks ago or a week ago. Amen. I'm, I'm still working, yeah. Amen. Amen. Okay, then this last part says, list several things you know oh, God expects of again? you. Mm -mm. No, I'm frozen. Oh, am I frozen? No. Oh, okay. You were. Oh, okay. Well, I'm back. Honestly, admit to Creator King, if you have been living a life, even, wait a minute, I'm reading the wrong thing. List several things you know God expects of you based on scripture, um, but which you have felt were restrictive. Then write how the apparent restrictions are for your protection. And I'm just going to say my real quick, I wrote a lot of them. Because initially, you would think that they are restrictive, but you know that they're for your protection. The first one I have here is Luke 6 and 28, which is basically saying, bless those that curse you. You would think, why would I bless somebody that's hurt me, right? You're thinking that's restrictive, but it's helping you in the long run, right? The next one is 1 Thessalonians 5 and 17, and that's pray without ceasing. And you think, why I got to pray all the time? Yeah, because it's helping you, right? You're thinking that's restrictive. Why I got to pray all the time without ceasing? So that's one. Then I put Proverbs 18, 21. Death and life is in the power of the tongue. Why, why I can't say what I want to say? Because it's for your protection. Speak life, right? Amen. Matthew Amen. 17 through 18. Um, only these things come out through fasting and prayer. And that's something that's restrictive. I can't eat. No, you need to cast these demons out. You need to bring you, engage your spiritual help. So you need to fast, sis. You can't be eating all the time, all right? So fasting is a restrictive thing, but it is our spiritual weapon that we need to engage it often. Hallelujah. Amen. And then I have Proverbs 19, 17, which is give to the poor. Initially, if you're not of God, you would know why well, I'm helping them. I need help myself. No, give to the poor. You lend it to God and God will repay you. Hallelujah. And when you give to the poor, you lack nothing. Hallelujah. Amen. And I have Amen. Ephesians 6 and 11. Put on the whole armor of God. Why Amen. do I have to put my whole armor in? Because you're in the war, sis. It's for your protection. Amen. Then I have Philippians 4, 6 through 7. 
and it says, don't be anxious and worry for nothing. Why? Because I can. Amen. 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 <laughs> that note, I'm going to take every last one of those that Rakisha said, and those are mine too. Amen. Amen. I'm going to say that I truly didn't look up no scriptures. Man. Some of the ones you said, I definitely I'm don't. Hers. And, and, and I, I, I was in one of them today, you know, and I also always put on the whole armor guard morning and night. And sometimes during the day, you know, because because you might feel like you need it. But um, I was in that Matthews, um, I think it was Matthews 12 uh, today. So about the evil spirits, we do have to fast and pray. Now, that's what I was having a problem with fasting and praying because I was so, um, well, y'all, the ones who see me know that I'm fat. So y'all know I like to eat. Uh, but I, I'm I'm working on it. I'm working on that. Well, I pray, but I'm Amen. working on the fasting part and praying. And I love people, so I'm always trying to help somebody that's in need. Even when I'm in Amen. need, I'm still trying to help somebody. I mean, even just giving them change out of my purse, if that's all I got. I, I don't care. That's part of my nature to give and to love. So I, I'm working Amen. hard on the fasting. Amen. Anybody else? Man. I'm, I'm amen yours, Keisha. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I and, do too. I amen that as well. And, and throw in Isaiah 26 and 3. And what's that say? Um, you keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on. I put stayed on Jesus because he trusts in you. Amen. I just amen. 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 We need that. Passes all of us. Amen. I throw my okay. favorite. Nine fourteen and one. Let your heart not be troubled. Amen. <laughs> amen. Amen. Was I was I frozen? No, amen. We, and this is getting late. Everybody else is getting sleepy, but we fired up for the Lord, and I appreciate what God saying on this one. So I, I appreciate you all, beautiful women here. Um, we want more. If y'all want to come on, come on and join the family, FFT family. We would love to have you. We're trying to build it up. Go and get this book. You, I'm telling you, it, it started off a little hard. It started off a little dry. Yes. It started off a little, little tough. But then this third chapter, it kicked in the gear. When I say it kicked in, it kicked in. We rolling now, y'all. We rolling. Yeah. We rolling. So go on and get the book. We only going to be on chapter four. The order today, by yeah. prime, you should have it by the next, by the next lesson. We're going to be on lesson four. Yeah. Okay? So go ahead and go on and grab that. It's going to change your life. Gonna bless your life. I promise you, who wouldn't want to know about the governor who dwells within us, okay? So on that note, we are going to be out. And we are always moving with purpose. Where are you guys? Right. Oh, oh. Yeah. 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 Yeah.